Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. This video is the beginning of many in a series of a quilt along. I wanted to have a project that we could all do together at the same time. I decided it was time for a free motion quilt along sampler quilt. I will go into much more detail about this project during the video itself. The plan is to free motion quilt 36 quilt blocks and then connect them together with sashing. Now, since this quilt isn't done yet, I can't give you a visual of this quilt, but what I can do is show you a quilt that's not finished yet that I started probably three years ago that has this same concept right here in mind. How many of you have bins like this hanging around in your sewing room with unfinished projects in it? I know, it's terrible, but this is an unfinished one. And all this one needs is a border and to be bound. It's sad, really. Now, mind you, this is very wrinkled because it's been in lockdown for like three years. So this right here is the back of this particular quilt. And it has the same concept as what we're going to do with this free motion quilt along. This sashing right here, it pops off this white and so does this right here. And I'll go into more detail about this in this video. We're not only going to have the sashing going this way, we're also going to have it going this way. The free motion quilting on this, it must have been a free for all because I see everything in there but the kitchen sink. <laughs> now mind you, this was when I first started and you can tell I was excited about it with all this free motion quilting in here. I'll show you the front just because I know you're probably just dying to see the front of this quilt too, right? <laughs> I know, I put a lot of work in this to not finish it, right? This right here is all improv scrappy quilting. And this is how silly I was back in the day. I took this same fabric, cut it up and pieced it together. I don't know what I was thinking. And someday I will finish it. So I showed you that to give you an idea of what this quilt will end up looking like, but on both sides, it'll be white. Now you can choose whatever colors you want. You don't have to go with white or floral for the sashing. You can do what you like and what you want to do. All the products that I use and fabric and all that, it'll all be down in the information box, the description box just below this video along with measurements and all the other information. I will even answer your questions as we go. And if I think that everyone needs to hear the answer, then I will definitely put it in the information box. As we go through this quilt along, I encourage you to check the description box regularly because there might be information in there that you need to know. I will release one video a week, possibly two, depending on how my schedule goes. In each video, I'm going to try to have two quilt along blocks in it. It all depends on my schedule on what day I'm going to post these videos. Now, if I can get enough done ahead of time, I can give you a solid day. I will keep going until I get to 36 blocks. Not quite ready to take the plunge into a quilt? Do some practicing with this free motion quilting hack that I came up with. And then be sure to come right back here I'm so excited about this quilt along. I may just finish this quilt this week. <laughs> now this quilt along, it costs absolutely nothing, but it would help if you were a subscriber and you hit the like button. Are you in? I hope so. Let me know down in the comments with hashtag free motion quilt along. Enough talking already. Let's get busy quilting together. I will be using a 8012 top stitch needle by Superior Needles. They are titanium coated. I will also be using Superior thread called So Fine. It is a 50 weight three ply polyester. For this sampler quilt, you are definitely going to need a marking tool that disappears. Now this one is a fine point by Dritz and it comes out in blue. As you can see there, I'm testing it. And just with a spritz of water, it disappears. It's really nice. And we're gonna need that because we're gonna do a lot of designing. <laughs> I recommend cutting out all of the blocks that you'll need ahead of time. For this quilt, you will need 72 white blocks at 12 and a half inches square. I used Riley White for mine. 
That's 36 for the front and 36 for the backing since it's a quilt as you go quilt. You will need 36 12 and a half inch squared pieces of batting. I used warm and white. When free motion quilting, sometimes things can get a little out of hand. So I like borders and guidelines. On each one of the front of the blocks on the white piece, I'm going to measure in three quarters of an inch on all four sides. And then I'm going to mark it with the disappearing ink. I'm also going to recommend to you that you mark these just prior to free motion quilting them because I've in the past had a problem with these marking pens if I mark something ahead of time and then set it aside and forget about it. So it's just best to do it just before we free motion quilt and then we'll also erase it right after we're done. Once I have all my marks, I'm going to flip it over, add in the batting, and then I'm going to add the other cotton white square on top of that. Make sure everything is as even as possible. I did give us a little bit of wiggle room for cutting later, so, but it's always good to try to be precise. And then I'm going to just pop a few pins in just on the four corners, just to make sure everything is nice and secure. After the pins are in, I flip it over, make sure the back is nice and smooth, and I'll adjust any pins if I need to at that point. First up in our free motion quilt along is a big bouquet of hearts. And you'll notice the star in the center, that's where I start. Typically when I sit down to start some free motion quilting, I always hand crank my needle down to grab the bobbin thread. Then I pull it out and take a couple of stitches and then I just simply cut the thread right then and there because I don't like to worry about it later and sometimes that thread will just get in my way so I cut it right away. I chose the heart motif to be our first free motion quilting block in this quilt sampler because I figured it was just a familiar shape and a lot of you would have that muscle memory already built into your brain, hopefully. <laughs> But you see here, all I did was start in the center and make one big heart shape. And then I echoed inside of it, coming down to the point, that bottom point of the heart to close everything up. Now this is one of the reasons why I really love So Fine Thread by Superior. You can literally go over this threading area several times with thread and it doesn't build up like your normal thread would. It's really nice. So you see here, I'm going to make a big heart and then I'm going to go ahead in the inside of it and then again in the inside. And you see here, I kind of changed directions there and I messed up a little. I was also trying to practice going horizontally with my free motion quilting, and that's a little tougher for me to get, but I try it here and there to see if I can get it. Now I messed up there, I won't fix that. I'll just keep going and you won't see it in the end. Now you can see here that every time I hit that middle area of where all those points hit on the heart, I'm building up thread there and you can't even tell. Now I wanna break out of this cluster of this bouquet of hearts and come out, and that's what I did right there to change directions of the way this heart was going. In order to do that, I had to figure out where there was more space on one side of that cluster of hearts, and that's when I just broke out and then turned it the opposite way of the heart that was right next to it. And then I just echo it and echo it and echo it and fill in with those curved lines. And anytime I got in a bind and I didn't know how to get out of a situation, I just threw in those curved lines. Here I'm showing you another mistake that I made. I accidentally echoed on the inside of only half of the heart. So what I did to fix that was I immediately went on the other side of the heart and just made a mirror image of it and did the same thing. And nobody's going to be able to tell, as you can see right there. 
once I got the cluster of hearts in the center as big as I wanted it, because that's the focal point of this particular block, then it was time to fill in the rest of the block. And that's what's so nice about these small quilt sandwiches for these sampler quilts. They're just big enough so that you're not doing a whole lot, but it looks like a whole lot. I still have so much to learn when it comes to free motion quilting. I've been trying it for about three years now, and just here and there, I'll try to do a project, and it only keeps building and building with practice. At first, when I started, I was so uncomfortable. I thought, oh my word, what in the world? How am I going to do this? And it's like drawing with your sewing machine. But like with anything, you have to to practice the technique otherwise you're never going to learn it so you can see here in the corner why these lines are really necessary they help give me a guide to where the end point is and you can see there I put that heart in the corner over there and I use the point down in the corner and that really helped me pull that heart outward and with this design I'm just putting a lot of other little hearts and echoing all around that burst of hearts in the center and adding a lot of little curved lines like you see me do right there that helps because the shape of the top of our heart is curved and so when the eye sees those curved lines it just thinks it's another heart and so I just keep going around and around Another good reason to make sure those lines are there is when we go to connect these blocks together with our sashing, we don't want the tops of or the bottoms of our hearts to be cut off. I mean, I don't want mine to anyway. Now, after we connect all of our blocks together in the end, I may change my mind. I might want to add a little something. I don't know yet. I want you to notice in the corner there, there was a tiny space left. Now I would not have known that unless those lines were on there. So I put a very tiny heart in there, which totally makes things blend. As we go through the sampler quilt and we continue forward, I'm going to try to give you a few tips that I've learned along the way in the past few years. I mean, like I said, I'm no expert at all, but I have a few things that may help you. One of the biggest tips that I could give you, and it, it concerns thread breakage. I used to break thread a lot and it would shred and I'd be like, what in the world? I'm doing everything that everyone says to do and I'm still shredding my thread. Well, come to find out, I was turning my quilt or my quilt sandwich, whichever I was working on, I was turning it too much and then turning it back again too much. Essentially what I was doing, I was twisting my thread underneath my presser foot there and in between my bobbin. So I was literally tangling myself up and then as it would try to shoot through my material, it would break and shred. So once I paid attention to that and kept my quilt or my quilt sandwich pretty steady, I would only turn it here and there, my thread totally stopped shredding and breaking. So if you're having that same problem, try to keep your quilt sandwich or your quilt going in one direction, only tweaking it a little to the right or a little to the left. Sometimes I know you may have to turn it pretty good amount, but that's okay if you're only doing it once. But if you're doing it consecutively over and over again, that's going to cause a tangle and breakage. So I hope that tip really helps you out. So you can see right here, I'm gonna go along the edge a little bit, right there. And in the end, after I'm done with this block, I am going to outline the entire block with some stitching. And I don't know, it just kind of closed everything in and you can choose to do that or not to do that. It's totally up to you. You can see here I'm in another corner position there and I just made the point of the bottom of the heart come out of that corner and then just echo around and fill in with some curved lines. 
It's been a while since I've been so excited about a quilting project, and this one has me so excited. I cannot wait to get through each and every one of these blocks. I hope you're just as excited as I am too. Now here we're coming to the end, and all I do to tie mine off, I mean, I'm not an expert at it, remember, I just stitch back and forth and cut threads and I can never see it on the back so I think I'm okay. Once you have everything all filled in go ahead cut your threads and take it to the pressing mat and now we're going to spritz some water over top of those blue lines and I do give it just a very light press. Here's a good look at the finished product. It looks so cute. I'm so happy with it. Now it's time to trim these down to 11 and 3 quarter inches square. I lay my big ruler down and I take off about a quarter of an inch on two edges and then I take a look and see what's left and then I square it up from there because I want the same amount of white showing on that border all the way around so that just kind of helps me keep things center. Here I'm just showing you with the ruler that it ended up being 11 and 3 quarter inches square. On to our next free motion quilting design, and it's a very simple meander. And you can see at the top there, I had my star starting at any of the sides. Now we're going to start it just like we did in the previous block. Drop your needle, grab your thread, and bring it up to the top. And then you're going to just start on one of the edges that you have marked, and you're just simply going to meander all around this quilt block staying sort of in the same area and then moving to the next area so you don't have to go back to that first initial area and fill anything in. And you just want to make sure that you have about the same spacing in between each of those meander lines and that will help keep everything nice and tightly filled. This free motion quilting design seems pretty easy and straightforward but when you're actually doing it it's kind of hard for me anyways to make those curves and go back around because I have to actually think a little bit on this one to where I'm going to go next and I, I don't know why it's hard for me but it just is. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments if any of you have trouble with this very easy quilt block pattern. You'll notice on mine that some of it is very irregular and it's because I just I'm having a hard time getting it but no worries I'm still going to use this block in my quilt and it's going to be gorgeous and nobody's going to even notice. I think sometimes when I try to slow down a bit that's when I have most of my problem because then I'm really trying to think okay I'm slowing down and I'm moving and yeah that's not working either. It's better for me if I go at about three quarters of full speed and just think, really. I don't know, it's hard to explain. It may work better next time for me if I think of a sequence in my head, like left, right, up, down, side, other side, I don't know. Let me know if you guys have a tip on how to get your meanders even all over. I really do think one of my major problems on this particular block that I'm showing you is I went too fast. So, I'm thinking that that was my problem and maybe in a later block that I do I'll redo this one with a twist and I can take my time and hopefully I will have gotten better at it by then because practice is what it's going to take to get this right. Now if this meander turned out really 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 bad I would definitely chuck it and do a new one but this one isn't so bad, so I think I'm going to keep this one, and it's going in no matter what. So I'm heading to the last corner area where I'm going to be ending, and I'm aware of it, and you need to be aware of it too, just, you know, where you're at, and you can see the lines that we made, so you can tell how big you need to get, or how small. And I did go off a little bit, but that's okay. You're not even going to see that. And then I just go back and forth and cut my threads. And here I'm just spritzing the blue away, giving it that very, very light press because we don't want to press down all the quilting that we just did. 
trim your block down to 11 and 3 quarter inches square just like we did on the other block centering it up so that you have the same amount of unquilted area around the entire block okay i dare you i double dog dare you point out my mistakes no don't do that because i can see them too <laughs> so here's our two blocks right here aren't they pretty oh my word but what's going to make them even prettier is some sashing. Now this was my sampler of my sampler quilt. <laughs> and my four block sampler, it got me so excited. I knew what fabric I was going to be using for the sashing. It was going to be my ultimate all time favorite fabric, Julia's Garden. Here I'm auditioning the fabric to see how it would look as sashing between my two blocks as if I would think that it would be anything other than beautiful, right? This quilt is going to be the best of both worlds for me. Dense quilting over all white with the sashing of this fabric print. Oh my word, this quilt is going to be gorgeous. And since we'll be cutting strips, you'll probably notice that I'm going to be fussy cutting some of this fabric only because some of the areas are too white in the fabric print and I don't want just a strip of white with a few green leaves. I want that actual print in there. I am cutting one inch strips at length of fabric and two inch strips at length of fabric. Here's a cutting tip for you. You can see I add that ruler off to the right so that way I don't have to move my fabric back and forth along the edge to cut it and I just keep that one ruler stationary, the one on the left. Take your strips over to the pressing station and give them a hot press. The one inch strip first I'm pressing there and then with the two inch strip you're going to fold in half and then press it giving it a really nice crease. The two inch strip will be visible from the front and the one inch strip will be visible from the back. Since that two inch strip will be on the front, I need to figure out which side is more pleasing to my eye. And it's that side, of course, with that pink rose on it. So I'm going to place that pink rose, we'll call it the right side, hitting the right side of the heart block. And you see here how when I fold it back over, it shows. And then since I'm fussy cutting it, I did have some waste, but I'm saving those scraps because I, I love this fabric that much. I'm going to save every little bit of scrap. So once you cut the ends, because it's gonna be roughly, you know, I'd say 12 inches or so, go ahead and make your cuts if you're just cutting to give you some wiggle room. You're going to take your pins and pin that right on the edge of that quilt block. Now I'm taking that one inch strip and figuring out which part of that strip I want to be visible on the back and then I'm going to make a 12 inch cut of that. Now if you were just cutting whatever fabric and strips you would just make a bunch of them at one time. You, didn't, you wouldn't have to do what I'm doing right here. So take that one inch strip and you're going to place the right side of that one inch strip to the back of that quilt block, just like you see me doing here. Once I have it to where I know that's where it's going to go, then I flip it up and around just like that. So now I'm actually looking at the back of this quilt block right now. So I'm just going to even everything up and take the pins out and repin it so that all of those layers are together. This quilt as you go sashing technique is really easy. The only thing that you need to pay special attention to is sewing a perfect quarter inch stitch right here down along this line that I'm pointing to. That is very important because once we meet these two blocks up together, they need to butt right up against each other. We don't want any gaps. You can always draw a line on your fabric if it helps you keep that quarter inch. I learned a few years back when I was using this technique and I didn't sew enough of a quarter inch that I had a huge gap between my batting and between my blocks and it was not good. Next, take it to the pressing station and press the one inch strip up 
away from the block, giving it a nice crease so it goes that way. Now take your other quilt block, the back of the quilt block, or the wrong side of the quilt block, however you want to say it. That back goes right on top of the one inch strip. So the right side of the one inch strip goes right up against the back side of the other quilt block. It sounds so confusing when I say it, but I hope you all know what I'm talking about. Go ahead and put some pins right in just like you see me do right there. And we're going to take it to the sewing machine and again, sew another perfect quarter inch seam. Only this time when I put it in my sewing machine, you see I flip it over so that I'm stitching onto the white quilted area and not the other side. And I do this because when it's the opposite way, my sewing foot hits the edge of the other quilt block and it throws it off, believe it or not. So even when I tried to put a smaller foot on, I, I just didn't feel comfortable with it. So this way, it sewed perfectly. Here you're looking at the back of the quilt now in that one inch strip. Look how nice everything is connected. And when I flip it around, now you're looking at the front where that two inch strip was. Now I want you to notice something here. See the opening? This is where the batting needs to butt up against each other. Just like you see me showing you right there. You see there's barely anything in between. Just barely anything and they're budding right up next to each other that's exactly what you want i give it a hot press right there and then i flip that two inch folded strip up and over and i give it a good hot press so it's going in the direction that it's supposed to go and it's going to cover up that seam where those two pieces are butt up against each other and then I give the back a hot press as well. When I flip it back over, I put a few pins in the front, just tacking down that front flap so that it's easier at the sewing machine. After everything is pinned down, take it to the sewing machine and put a top stitch right along the very edge of that opening. And then you're going to flip it around and sew a top stitch down the other edge, the closed edge of the front. My top stitch is just beyond that edge. It's right at the very edge. We're not doing a quarter inch stitch here or anything like that. It's just on the very edge. And you can see there, I turned it around and now I'm putting a top stitch down the closed edge of the front area. I've done just one stitch in the past down just one side, the, just closing up that opened area, and I didn't like it as much as I do having two stitches coming down. I just love this. I, I don't know, I, I don't know if it's my fabric that I love or the white quilting. I think it's just both. These are both my favorite things, and I, I just, I'm loving how it's all turning out. I just can't wait to finish up all the blocks. But in the meantime, we're going to trim off and square up kind of those edges there on the bottom. And then you end up with this beautiful, beautiful couple of blocks here. Here's a shot of the back. I mean, that looks gorgeous both ways. I mean, it's amazing. I just love it. This quilt is going to be six blocks across and six blocks down. So you can decide to connect them as we go or wait until you get a lot of them and then connect them then. Here's a sneak peek at the next couple blocks in our free motion quilt along. They are pretty. I'll show you all the ins and outs and how to make it. As soon as the new video post for these two blocks right here, I will put the link on the end screen of each video as we go. So if it's been done and uploaded, you should see a picture of it right here on your screen now. So go ahead and click on it. This is going to be so much fun. I can't wait. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.